So today's focus is on the fruit of the Spirit, and the one we're focusing on this morning is patience. In a world where one click of a button offers instant results, we've all got hectic schedules, we're all impatient. However, it's not about being irritated when someone gets on your nerves because we've got unrealistic expectations of them. Chris Wright suggests it is about being able to endure for an unlimited amount of time any suffering that comes our way. As the old saying goes, it's not a race, it's more of a marathon. Every day we all need patience, particularly if we've been misunderstood, misinterpreted, falsely accused, or find that people have been gossiping about us. And people will also need patience with us too. To have a degree of control over our emotions and not retaliate or have revenge in anger requires strength and stamina. And that's the most difficult part of this fruit of the spirit, looking after the welfare of those who cause us to be impatient, whether we like them or not. And that is self-sacrificing, and we are called to make peace and forgive as we have been forgiven. We are told by Peter to not be surprised by suffering and to rejoice in it because of our faith. This does not sound like much fun. And that's a huge challenge and one that's going to require an extraordinary amount of patience. Thankfully, in our reading from John 17, Jesus prays for protection for the disciples and all believers. We are offered the same spirit of protection that rested on Jesus, the one who endured and suffered the cross. He understood all about impatience and patience. We are reminded in the Old Testament that God is slow to anger and has been patient with us. When God is patient, he is carrying our load of sin. He doesn't retaliate against us. Why? Because he loves us. He chooses to carry the weight of our sins, which is what Jesus did on the cross. Jesus was mocked, persecuted and suffered violence. He did not retaliate, even though it was well within his power to do so. The ultimate picture of patience in suffering throughout which Jesus trusted in God the Father. In the UK, we may be mocked, made fun of or ridiculed for being a Christian, but we're fortunate because we do not um, have the open persecution that some Christians around the world suffer. The 14th of April this year marks six years since Boko Haram attacked the state school secondary girls in Chibuk, northeastern Nigeria, and they kidnapped over 220 girls. Today, six years later, 112 of those still remain in captivity. One of the women told Open Doors, one of the charities, that she was forced to become a Muslim. But when she prayed, she didn't do the Salat, which is the obligatory Muslim prayer. She instead prayed to Jesus. Her captors noticed this, that she was not praying the way that she was supposed to, and they began monitoring her. They found out she was in fact praying to Jesus. So they beat, raped, and finally locked her up in a cave. By grace, her prayers were answered. One of the leader's wives took mercy on her and helped her escape. The women say they know that it wasn't their own strength or wisdom that helped them survive. They know it was God helping them. He changed people's minds and attitudes. Their faith and what they learnt before being kidnapped helped them to keep going. This is an extreme example of patience in the, in in time of suffering for Christ, but her faith and trust in God is what brought her through it. And that is something that we can learn from in times of suffering when patience is needed. The capacity to accept or tolerate suffering and never losing hope. 
From my own personal experience, when you are suffering and need patience, bring it to God. Lay it before him. Trust in God. He is loving and faithful. Turn to his word, the Bible. It is reliable. It's solid. It takes away fears and anxieties and it's refreshing. The suffering may not or ever go away, but through his Holy Spirit, he gives us the strength and the endurance through patience. God makes as many promises in the Bible, and one of them is Hebrews 13, verse 5. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. In complete confidence, we can continue in our hope and trust of God. Remembering Psalm 33, verse 20. He is our help and our shield. He is constant and unfailing in his love and care for each and every one of us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for the virtue of patience in our hearts, homes and our lives. We want to wait patiently for your will to enfold in our lives, trusting in an unfailing God. Help this fruit of the Spirit to grow and ripen within us so that we are equipped in all that we do. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.